Hello everyone, my name is Braden Gerard, and today we're gonna to look at how you can set up Strapi with Docker. So first we're gonna create a new Strapi application by running create Strapi app. And that's just gonna ask us what we wanna name our project. So we'll call this Docker Strapi tutorial. And we'll just do a quick start and that will set up our project for us. Okay, and my application just finished installing. It tried to automatically run, but I already had something running on port 1337. So let's just change into the directory of the project. So I called that Docker Strapi tutorial, and let's open that up so we can edit the code. So we pull up the code here for that. And all we have to do is create a new file over here, and we call that the Docker file, capital D, and in this Docker file, we're going to write the instructions for our Strapi application to run in Docker. So these instructions uh, I followed from a great guide provided uh, on this blog by Delin.dev. Um, this is linked to also in the Strapi docs. So if you would like to follow the text version, you can check that out here. Uh, the link will be in the description. What you're gonna start out with is the image that we're gonna be using in Docker. So we're gonna use Node 16. Uh, then you're going to install some libraries so that we can have compatibility for Sharp, which is what some of the NPM modules use. So this will be apt-get update to update our image and then install the libvips-dev library with the dash Y, so install uh, yes to everything. Then we're going to add the argument uh, for the node environment. So by default, it'll be equal to development, but we can change that to be uh, production if we want by passing that in as an environment variable on the docker command line so that's done by saying set an environment and set our environment variable to the node environment that we've set here as either an argument on the command line or defaulted to development so this sets our node environment then we're going to set the working directory to forward slash opt as that's where we'll be setting our file paths and whatnot. Then we're gonna copy the package.json and the package uh, yarn.lock, sorry, to that current directory. Um, then we're gonna set the environment path to opt forward slash node underscore modules forward slash dot bin colon dollar sign path. And that's telling Docker where to find our node modules in that op folder. Um, then we're going to set yarn to be configured to run uh, on a longer timeout in case it takes a little longer to run our yarn install. Um, so we'll set that to 600,000 uh, globally, and then we will say yarn install so that we're running that command in Docker. Um, then we're going to set our working directory to forward slash op forward slash app. And we will copy everything that we currently have here on our local machine into that Docker directory. And then we're going to expose, oh, sorry, then we're gonna run our yarn build. So that'll build our project. And then we're going to expose 1337 so that the port can be uh, used on our host machine. And then we're gonna say command yarn, and we're gonna say develop. Now, uh, this is if you're doing it with Yarn. Uh, if you're going to be using NPM, you can follow that blog post. It has a great example using NPM as well. So this is all that you need to set up your Docker file. So we'll save that. Um, now there's one other file that you're gonna want to add and that will be the Docker ignore. Uh, this works very similar to a git ignore file and it basically tells Docker stuff that it doesn't need to include in the image. So in our dot Docker ignore, we're going to add the temp folder because we don't need temp folder included in the image. We're gonna add the cache folder because we also don't need that. The git folder, the build folder, the node modules folder, and the data folder. So none of that needs to be included inside of our Docker image. And now we're gonna build our Docker image. So now that we have this Docker file, we can open up a terminal in our project directory here and we can run Docker build dash T to give it our name. So we're gonna call it uh, my docker strappy and then latest. 
this can be any version number you want. I'm just setting it to latest and then dot to build the current, build in the current location. So if we run that, that will build our Docker image. You do need to make sure that you have Docker running uh, locally. So make sure that you have either Docker desktop installed or Docker set up on the command line. I have Docker desktop running, so uh, I can use the Docker command line or CLI, sorry. So yeah, make sure that's running. And we will see in a minute that that image will appear here once it is built. Okay, and now that our Docker image has finished building, we can check back in our Docker desktop and we can see that we have my Docker Strapi as an image now with the tag latest. So if we go back to our code here, we can now run that image. So we can say Docker run dash D to disconnect so that it's running in the background, dash P to set the port to what we want it mapped to on our local machine. So 1337 from 1337 inside of Docker. Um, we could change this first port here to something like 8080 if you want to run uh, Strapi on a different port on your local machine. Uh, we're going to say 1337 and 1337 and then give it a name. So we'll just select, or sorry, select the name of the image. So my Docker Strapi and we hit enter and then you'll see the ID here of the container that's running. And if we go back over to our Docker desktop and look at our containers, we can see that it is indeed running here. And if we go over to our Chrome and we say go to local host 1337, we now have Strapi running inside of Docker. So that's how you can set up Strapi to run inside of Docker.